virologists at the University Hospital in Tübingen seek to use a test rig to establish how coronaviruses in aerosols can be inactivated by UVC radiation. We have shown that SARS-CoV-2 can be sterilized on surfaces by UVC-based inactivation processes. In the end, it completely loses its infectivity. And we have a certain idea, in the end, it completely loses its infectivity. And we have a certain idea of the doses that are necessary for this. However, these results cannot be transferred to aerosols, as the virus particle behaves quite differently in aerosols, in droplets, than when it is fixed on surfaces. And that's why the aerosol test rig will help us enormously. Because for the first time we can investigate the extent to which UVC is also suitable for inactivating the virus particle in aerosols and, above all, what is needed to achieve this. The aerosol test rig is intended to do exactly what we normally want to avoid in safety laboratory level 3. So, we want to transfer highly infectious, highly pathogenic virus particles into a phase where the viruses are infectious for us. This is something that is tailor-made for us. Professor Niesner explains which components belong to the test rig. First of all, our test rig consists of a conduit system allowing flow through. At the very beginning is the aerosol generator, which gently nebulizes cell culture medium containing SARS-CoV-2 viruses so that they are preserved. At the end is a vacuum pump, which generates a volume flow that can be controlled. And in between is our test section, which consists of a UVC lamp and a quartz glass tube in which the aerosols flow. And the UVC lamp generates a homogeneous radiation intensity in this quartz glass tube. Behind the test section, there is a gelatin filter on which aerosol is collected. The tubing and virologists then dissolve and see how many infectious germs are present. At the very end, there is another safety filter. Additionally, there is a lot of measurement technology inside. Sensors that measure the radiation intensity, the temperature, the relative humidity, and the ozone concentration. Even though fluid mechanics engineers have already built several rigs for aerosols, industry and testing of nests, this rig poses special challenges. Once you have a predefined size, the whole thing has to fit into the sterile batch. That's the first point. Then, it's also important that no lines or hoses have to be routed from the sterile bench to the outside. This is a challenge, especially with aerosol generation, because compressed air is needed for this. This means that we actually have to generate the compressed air ourselves with a compressor in the sterile bench and thus avoid potentially transporting contamination from the inside to the outside. The third point is that the setup has to be planned extremely carefully, because once parts are in the sterile bench, they can only be taken out again if they are either autoclavable or can be bathed in sterilium. This means that trial and error is not possible. If the virologists prove the inactivation, this test rig could be used to test and certify air purification filters that work with UVC rays. To this end, the state of Baden-Württemberg is funding this project. The situation right now is that air purification devices are not yet certified. This means that customers cannot yet distinguish between effective and ineffective devices. And I think that this activity can help in two ways to prepare for certification. One is that we are determining the operating parameters, the UVC, which is what air purification devices have to have in order for activation to occur to some degree. This means that one could simply compare the operating parameters that we have determined, thus determine the inactivation potential of the ear purification devices. The second point is, one could use our test setup as a kind of preliminary work, so to speak. If you now have surrogate viruses that exhibit the same inactivation as the coronaviruses, then you could use a test set up like ours. Only instead of the UVC lamp plus the quartz glass tube, you could then install an air purification device, carry out device tests, and at the end of the test, the activity of those harmless surrogate viruses that are not infectious. Virologist Schindler has his side set on even broader possibilities for the test platform. We are now planning a project that will allow us to simulate how seasonality affects the inactivity of virus particles in the context of this aerosol test rig. The nasty infectious diseases come in the fall, and as soon as it gets warmer again in the spring, the problem comes to an end from one day to the next. We now want to develop the test box further so that we can also modulate these environmental parameters. Humidity, ozone content, natural solar radiation, which also contains UV light. 
We want to simulate seasonality, so to speak. I think that's very exciting. 